Hey guys, it's Sherry Vegas here and welcome to my part 2 of my beginner's guide to flow acrylic painting. Be careful not to unbind your paints with too much water. A lot of flow and fluid acrylic painting um, artists love to use water to thin down their sort of um, their more heavy body paints to make it easier to flow over canvas, but it can affect how your paints will set. Unbinding is when you pull the paint apart so much with the water that you're actually pulling apart the molecules which causes the paint to have a weak bond and this will stop the paint from being able to set properly um, or it might start to split, crack, flake all while you're doing your pour or while it's setting. I suggest when you are diluting your paints if you want to use water um, do not use more than 30% water in ratio to your paint. So um, this will stop it from um, unbinding and having the mo molecules pull apart. You can also use mediums instead. So that's why I like to use mediums instead of diluting my paints too much because mediums will stop the unbinding from happening. Now, if you are using a very porous surface, so say an unprimed wooden board, you can dilute your paints a little bit more because the porous surface, like the wood um, fibers, will actually lock onto that paint and help it stay together. So that will give it a lot stronger bond, um, but you just couldn't do this on any surface that wasn't as porous. So if you don't want to risk it, just stick to a pouring medium. They are designed to thin your paint out without diluting it and without creating the unbinding effect. Which brings me to my second topic, why use pouring mediums? Well, for the reason that I've just covered, pouring mediums will stop the unbinding effect that you might get when you use too much water instead of using a pouring medium. Pouring mediums are great because they do help thin your paint out, making it easier to flow of your board, but they still keep the strength and integrity of your paint. So by using a pouring medium, it will act as a diluter and a thinner, but will also keep its strength, unlike water which will only weaken your paint. The first way you can seal your flow acrylic artwork is by adding a resin layer on top. So if you haven't worked with resin before, I encourage you to watch my beginner's guide to resin art and that will give you some great tips and tricks for how to apply your resin layer. I'm just mixing my epoxy resin, so there's two parts, there's a hardener and the resin and you mix those together equal parts. Just follow the manufacturer's instructions for whatever resin that you, we, you will be using. Once I have equal parts in my measuring jug, I just mix those together. You want to mix your resin really thoroughly because you don't want to have any spots where the hardener and the resin didn't mix together. Then once I've mixed it all up, I then apply a coat over the top of my artwork. Once I have my even layer of resin over the top of my artwork, I then just use a blowtorch and I go over that very lightly just to pop any resin bubbles. So the heat will help pop the bubbles because obviously you don't want any of those on top of your artwork. And just try not to keep the blowtorch in one spot for too long as it can burn the resin. Then I just let the resin sit for 24 to 48 hours depending on what brand you're using and then it will be a nice hard surface. Now the second way you can coat your surface is with a clear varnish. I'm using a gloss spray on. You can also get this where you can paint it onto your artwork as well. I find the spray on is the easiest way. Just make sure you wear gloves and a mask or a respirator just because it is quite smelly and because you are spraying it on, those particles will be going in the air and you don't want to breathe that in. As I spray it on, I make sure I keep turning my board so I don't miss any areas in my art piece. Once you're happy with the coating or varnish you have applied, just let it dry. It takes anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour depending on how much varnish you apply and also the temperature of the room. I just purchased this varnish from Art Riot stores. This is what it looks like when I have just used the spray over the top and you get a really beautiful glossy surface. It's a lot cheaper than using resin, but it's up to you whether you want to use resin or not. I've shown you the two options that you can do. Um, and then, yeah, it's pretty simple. You just spray it and let it dry it dry within an hour. So, pretty good. I quite like the finish of it. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed my part two to my floor acrylic guide for beginners. If you like this, give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe for more art tutorials.